What's going on YouTube? Ardap Dan here, Federal Prison Time Consulting. Hope you guys are all having another amazing week. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about mindsets and how mindsets positively influenced me through my prison experience and how I imagine it can also work for you as well if you adopt the proper mindset. We'll give everybody a few minutes to join us here and if you haven't already done so, go ahead and take a moment to subscribe to our channel. Uh, it's real simple, you just tap on the subscribe button, also turn on your notifications which is that little bell up in the top right hand corner of your screen. Go ahead and take a second. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and also send a text message. Uh, text the word YouTube to 76626. Text the word YouTube to 76626, and that will put you on our notification list so you don't miss any of our live streams when we get ready to go live. So what's everybody got going on this evening? Everybody staying out of trouble? I know a lot of you are going through some extremely rough, peri uh, extremely rough periods of time getting ready to either uh, face your indictment, maybe you're under criminal investigation, you're not sure what to do. There is a link in the description of this video where you can book yourself a free consultation to find out how we might be able to assist you. So make sure if you're not sure what to do and you're not sure how you should be holding your attorney accountable. We hear so often mistakes that people made uh, because they didn't know any better or they didn't understand what they could have been doing differently. So if you don't know what your attorney should be doing. Uh, don't just assume that you're getting all of the proper advice. Uh, our job is not to come in and do your attorney's job. Our job is to, through so many of our clients in making mistakes and what they wish they had done different, compiling a roadmap that you can use with your attorney just to ask them the questions, just to make sure that everything's being done. Because at the end of the day, you're likely the one facing a federal prison sentence, not anybody else. So don't leave it in somebody else's hands. Take control. All right. Who do we got here with us? We got Kimberly. What's going on, Kim? TIP. What's up? What's up, Dan? Fresh out of the USP Duluth. <laughs> Welcome home, TIP. Furl. TIP Furl. Welcome home. Uh, Tamara. Hey, Tamara. I got your uh, I got your consultation booked. I think we're on for tomorrow at some point. So I appreciate you using the link. Tomorrow makes my life a lot easier. Anthony Ganji over at Tier Talk. What's going on, my man? Uh, guys, if you haven't done so, Anthony Ganji has an amazing channel. It's all in regards to correctional officers, prison related uh, content, but from the the viewpoint of correctional staff and upper management within state and federal correction facilities, what they, what correctional staff should be doing to better prepare themselves for the journey of becoming a correctional staff or a correctional member of some, some level, and also how inmates and correctional staff can learn to live alongside each other while everything takes place without creating this animosity of it's us against them. Um, I was a federal inmate, and I know what it's like to feel like uh, correction staff is out to get you, but I can tell you that a lot of the times, a lot of inmates getting ready to go into prison will have that mindset, and they've already determined that correctional, st correctional staff is out to get them. So anytime anybody says anything, we're on such high alert, we just assume that it's coming from a negative point of view. And all reality is, is maybe they've dealt with some really shitty inmates that created the system that we're all in. So it goes both ways, two-way street. Uh, who else we got here? Okay, so today, guys, we're talking about, you know, mindsets. Mindsets are extremely important. Uh, if you don't already know that and you're going through something right now, um, I've developed some mindsets for myself while I was in prison, so I really want to kind of break it down. There's so many. There's there's more than just three, five, ten, twenty, uh, but you got to start somewhere, and you have to start really kind of picking and choosing what you're going to do if you're getting ready to go into federal prison. So this is what worked for me, and this was not an easy process. It took a lot of trial, a lot of error. Uh, I had to make mistakes. I had to get lumps on my head along the way. I had to realize that I had some problems that I needed to deal with, and by avoiding it and pretending like everybody else was the problem wasn't going to help my journey. Now, <clears throat> I put this in the description as well. If somebody would have told me prior to going to prison, they would have said, hey, Dan, do you realize going to prison is going to be the absolute best thing that you ever could have done, both for your financial freedom, creating a new career, which is awesome, 
but also you're going to be in the best state of mind that you've ever been coming out of prison. And if you choose to maintain that state of mind, nothing will be able to stop you. Nothing will be able to tear you down. You are going to create a path of financial freedom, success, happiness. All of those things go hand in hand when you do things for the right reason. So it all started going into the prison system for me. Prior to prison, I was a pretty broken down individual in more ways than one. I didn't. I had trust issues. Uh, people had trust issues with me. I would overpromise, underdeliver. Always wanted to be the person that had all of the answers. I was just not the person that I wanted to be. I had a view of myself that said, "Oh, I'm a good person," but my actions really kind of spoke much louder than than the things that I would say and the words that I would say. So once I was able to adopt these mindsets and really create a a system of implementing this throughout my life, which started in prison, it actually started with that book, if you guys can see in the background there, uh, Awaken the Giant Within, Tony Robbins. Uh, it all started reading that book. So I, I give a lot of credit to RDAP, but I also give a lot of credit to that book and Anthony Robbins, or Tony Robbins, because reading that book prior to going into RDAP, I was at such a low spot in my life that I really wanted to reach out for help and I didn't know who to ask. Uh, I had a problem asking for help. I didn't want to ask anybody for anything. So again, if somebody would have said to me, Dan, you're going to come out of prison a much better person. This is going to be a great thing for your life. I would have told you, you're absolutely out of your mind. We can say fucking on YouTube. I'm going to tell you, you're out of your fucking mind. Anybody that would have said that to me. I wouldn't have believed it. Just like anybody that's watching this video right now, getting ready to go to prison. There's nothing I can tell you that's going to make you feel that this could be a pivotal point where you could turn your life around and redefine yourself. So let's jump into these. I've got a cheat sheet over here that I'm reading or else I won't remember to go through all my notes. So my little whiteboard over here. So let's talk about number one. Number one, honesty. Now, we all know what honesty means. Tell the truth, right? Honesty. Sounds so easy. But honesty, and if you think of, a, of an onion, you start ripping off layers and it gets deeper and deeper. Um, when you start peeling back these layers of honesty, honesty is much more than just telling the truth. Uh, to, the best way to explain this is don't just be honest with yourself. You need to hold, you need to be honest with others. You need to tell people what they should be hearing versus what they want to hear. To be honest and have integrity in your life, it means completely being honest with everything you do. Challenge yourself when you wake up in the morning. You know What are your motives? Why are you doing the things that you're getting ready to do? Uh, you're getting ready to go to prison and you're getting ready to write a personal narrative or a character reference letter trying to express your remorse. Ask yourself, honestly ask yourself, why am I writing this letter? Am I writing this letter because I want the judge to give me a shorter sentence? And if you ask yourself that question and the answer is yes, hey, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get a shorter sentence. There's nothing wrong with wanting to get a message across to the judge. But also ask yourself, are you really sorry for what you did? Or is there a part of you that feels like, hey, I was taken advantage of or the system let me down or I was picked on or I'm not there yet. I'm still really pissed off at everybody and I'm not ready to take that level of accountability. But be honest with yourself when you're asking these questions. No one else is going to be honest with you. I can tell you that right now. Everyone else is going to tell you exactly what you want to fucking hear until the minute you turn your back. And then they're going to go, oh my God, can you believe what he did? Can you believe he's going to prison? I knew that something was wrong. He had a nice car. He had these nice houses. He was always taking people out, spending money. And nobody really ever knew what he did or the career that he had didn't really yield that kind of money. Whatever the situation was, be honest with yourself. Don't think you fooled anybody because then you're just lying to yourself. So honesty really is going to be the key to the foundation to everything. Once you can start being honest with yourself and you can start asking yourself real questions. Why did I do what I did? Ask yourself this question. Those of you that have children, make sure I'm not missing any questions. Make sure, for those of you that have children, ask yourself this question. For those of you that have not yet told your children about your situation. Now, if you have, you know, anywhere from, from very, very young to age, let's say six, seven years old. I get it. They're not going to understand what you did, why you're going to prison. They can't comprehend it yet. Okay. So minus that, when you've got children of age where they can start comprehending, they understand right from wrong. Stealing is bad. Lying is bad. Cheating is bad. 
you know, all of these things. Eating too many snacks at night is bad. I mean, we teach our kids, right? And now here you are, Mr. Screw-Up or Mrs. Screw-Up, getting ready to go to prison. And the last thing you want to do is admit it to your kids that you royally effed up. That's because you're too proud, you're embarrassed. So ask yourself honestly when you say, well, I don't want to hurt my kids, or I, I'm not going to tell them yet because they won't understand. Who are you trying to convince? You're trying to convince everybody else that you really are trying to protect your kids, and all of a sudden, you care so much about your children's well-being that you don't want to hurt them. Or is it that you're embarrassed and you're ashamed and you don't want to look your kid in the face and say, hey, I did whatever your crime was, white collar, blue collar, you robbed a bank, you robbed a bank with a pen, or you robbed a bank with a gun. Whatever your crime was, if you're embarrassed to tell your children, just be honest with yourself. Doesn't mean you're gonna to go tomorrow and all of a sudden tell them. But the point is, is start digesting how you're gonna process this. Before you can make changes, you have to understand what needs to be changed. You know, when you bring your car in and it needs work on it, you don't know what the problems are. You know you need your car fixed, but until they give you a diagnosis and say, well, we gotta replace this, this, and this. These are all the key components that need to be repaired in order for your car to run properly. You've got some key components inside of you, and until you break down these components and understand where your thinking went awry, you're not truly gonna be able to make the changes that you say you wanna make. So again, honesty, be honest with yourself, honest with your children, just honesty, honesty, honesty. And honesty doesn't mean you're gonna go out and tell the truth all of a sudden. Honesty means you're gonna start digesting it, you're gonna start breaking it down, and you're gonna start realizing that you're not doing yourself or anybody else any good by not being honest. So dissect honesty on your own time. Look it up in the encyclopedia. Get a bunch of different versions of what does honesty mean to somebody else. Maybe ask random strangers questions or family members or friends, say, hey, what does honesty mean to you? You might get a dumbfounded look like, um, I don't know, tell the truth. Some people don't think that deep. They, they're not used to thinking that deep. You might make their head hurt. You might make their brain you know, start burning some gears, but it's okay because that's gonna make us better individuals by having those types of conversations with those that we consider uh, intimate relationships with friends and family. So honesty, number one, okay, moving along. And feel free, guys, to ask some questions here. Uh, if you got any questions, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Come find us on social media, Instagram. Uh, Jenny's rehauling the website once again. Once again, we are making some massive modifications to the website. And I think Jenny, and Jenny's in the room right now. Hey, Jenny, what's going on? Jenny, good. Uh, Jenny is our backbone to Federal Prison Time Consulting with Ardap Dan. Without Jenny Good, Ardap Dan would just be... Honesty, right? I'm being honest right now. Without Jenny and our team, Ardap Dan would be just a bunch of hot air and very, very little follow through. So thank you, Jenny, for all that you do. Jenny just bought me some amazing lights for Boss's Day. I'm actually using them right now. So Jenny, thank you for the lights. I really, really appreciate it. Love you much. All right. <clears throat> so honesty, right? So moving on. Positive self-talk. Positive self-talk doesn't just mean today I'm going to wake up and accomplish amazing things. That is positive self-talk, but you got to have some positive self-talk with some actionable goals attached to it. Like what does that mean? What does it mean to use uh, positive self-talk? Positive self-talk in my world and the way I see it through my own eyes, and we can only talk about how things relate to us, right? So positive self-talk for me is I don't surround myself, or I try not to surround myself with negative-minded people, with people that don't ever have anything positive to say. There's debatable conversations, right? But if someone's always focusing on the negative or the cup is half empty, whatever it is, nothing ever works out. If it's gonna go wrong, it's always gonna go wrong. You know, I never have any good luck. If you're constantly surrounding yourself with these negative-minded people, I call these time vampires because they will literally suck the fucking energy and life out of you because you catch yourself trying to like, oh no, it's not that, you're constantly trying to talk somebody up. You have to be able to use positive self-talk for yourself and for the people. Again, this comes down to honesty, telling people what they need to hear versus what they want to hear. Next time somebody comes home and says, oh man, you can't believe what happened to me at work today. So-and-so did this, or so-and-so said this, or this person was arguing about this. All this bitching and bickering and, and behind the scenes talk and cross talking and talking behind people, gossiping, it's such a negative 
attribute to carry around. It's going to put so much weight and stress on what you're already going through is already extremely stressful and overbearing. So when you take all this negative individuals in your life, and we all got them, they all exist, you have to be able to pull yourself up, hold yourself to a higher standard, and disassociate yourself from negative-minded people. Now, you can bring it to somebody's attention and say, look, man, I love you, you're my family, or you're my best friend, or you're my boss, or you're my employee, whatever it is, but your negative attitude towards everything is really not good for my self-esteem. It's not good for where I wanna be in my life. I'm not telling you what to do, but I'm gonna create some distance and I would appreciate appreciate it if you'd expect the uh, um, appreciate it if you would go ahead and respect my boundaries. I can't have you constantly being that Debbie Downer that always has something bad to say about everything. I guarantee you, for every bad thing you have to complain about, if you look hard enough, you can find something good in that same situation. In anything, I don't care what it is. You get pulled over, you can find a good situation in it. You get arrested, you can find a good situation in it. You're getting ready to go to prison, you can find the light at the end of the tunnel. You have to be willing to look for it because once you put your focus on the positive, the negative stuff isn't gonna go anywhere. It's so easy to find the negativity in life. You need to use positive self-talk, positive reinforcement, positive thoughts, uh, just the word positivity. Replace negative words with positive words. Oh, work sucks today. Maybe that's not the best choice of statements to make. Maybe that's not the best sentence you could have made. Maybe you could have said, tomorrow I'm going to have a better day at work. Tomorrow I'm going to make tomorrow great. Instead of saying today sucked or tomorrow's going to be shitty or I got court tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to go to court and I'm going to do everything I can do to show, my, to show who I am, to let my character shine through. I'm going to put in the work. I'm going to put in the effort. Instead of being negative, a lot of you, there was things you might, you maybe should have done today. We had a, I had a conversation with a client today that's working on his. Uh, Brianna CC, I am the owner of RDAP Dan. Salute you. Um, I just had somebody ask me if I was the owner of RDAP Dan. I am. I am the owner. It's me, RDAP Dan. So the positive self talk. We had a client call today. And he was asking, hey, what else should I be doing? What else should I be doing? I'm getting ready to, I'm working on my narratives. I'm working on my character reference letters. And I'm getting ready to do my pre-sentence report. This is one of our clients. I said, great. What do you think you should be doing right now? You guys have watched my videos. You've, you've, you've seen everything that we discuss and we talk about. We create roadmaps. We give you direction. What we don't do is we don't do the work for you. We're not doing what the college admin scandal did. We're not doing why Felicity Huffman is in prison right now. I'm not going to hire somebody to write your letters for you. You're going to put in the work. You're going to answer all the questions. Our job is to craft a narrative based on your answers. Without that, the narrative is not your narrative. So when I spoke to my client today and he says, I think I'm going to have my pre-sentence report or my pre-sentence interview possibly next week. So why do you think that? He goes, well, my attorney has been very, very slow at answering any of my questions. And he told me it's supposed to be coming up. And knowing my attorney, he's going to call me on a Monday and say, I got to be there tomorrow. It's very possible. It happens all the time. So I asked him, I said, well, where is your narrative? How come you haven't started working on it? Oh, I get started on it and then I get busy. And I was like, you're making excuses for me? I was like, if I told you, and this goes to anybody listening right now, specifically our clients, if you're a client of ours right now, and I said to you, if you do this narrative and you work on it and you put all your effort and you put your heart into it and you take it serious, if I guaranteed you probation or I guaranteed you your case was going to get dismissed or I guaranteed you the judge is going to go, this is so good, slap on the wrist, don't do it again, here's your get out of jail free card, do not pass go, whatever. You'd be like, I'm on it. I'm going to do whatever I need to do. Well, that's the mindset you need to have. Positive self-talk. Tell yourself. If I put in bare minimal effort into this personal narrative, I'm very likely to get a bare minimal uh, result. And if you're looking for bare minimal results, why are you spending thousands of dollars with us so you don't get the best possible outcome you could receive? If I'm giving somebody five to ten thousand dollars and I'm gonna half ask what they ask me to do. 
you have to realize that there's no magic wand, there's no magic pill. This requires effort and responsibility and action and positive self-talk and honesty from you. It does. Don't blame your attorney because he's not answering your phone. Don't blame your attorney because you paid him $50,000 or $100,000 and he's now not giving you the answers that you thought. Where was your due diligence before you hired the attorney? What questions did you ask him? What questions did you know to ask him? Or were you sold some really clever bill of goods or some, some very slick snake oil salesman sales pitch that you fell for because you wanted to believe that somebody's gonna ride in on a white horse and slay the dragon? Federal government, dragon, same thing. Um, not a fan of the federal government. Not here to beat them up either, but you're in this situation probably because of yourself, not because of the federal government. So that's where we got to stay focused. So positive self-talk goes a long way because it allows you to create a mindset of marching forward every day instead of dwelling in the negativity and harping on it and then calling somebody that's going to give into that shit. You call, everybody's got that friend. When you're having a bad day, you can call them up and go, oh man, my attorney's not answering my calls. And then they'll be, man, this attorney you got is such a scumbag and I can't believe they're trying to send you to prison and there's murderers and rapists out there and you're like, I know, I know, I can't believe it either. Meanwhile, you just spent 45 minutes to an hour in some stupid fucking conversation that absolutely is going to do zero for you. It's not going to change any of the circumstances. You could have invested that same hour into either spending some time with your children, spending some time with your family, working on your personal narrative or character reference letters or prepping for your pre-sentence interview the next day. There's a million other things that you could be doing that are much more time worthy than bitching and complaining about something you have zero control over. Zero, right? Zero. So again, this is gonna bring us to number three. Number one, honesty. Number two, positive self-talk. Number three, stop focusing on what's out of your control. You're no longer in control. You're no longer driving the ship. You're on the ship. You might be able to yank on a sail. You might be able to you know, paddle a little harder. You might be able to seal up a couple holes. You might be able to navigate. Should we take a left? Should we take a right? At the end of the day, the judge has the final say, right? We realize that. Nobody's gonna outdo the judge. If there's a minimum mandatory, you might be doing some time no matter what. Your job is to create as much influence as possible and focus on is what, what's within your control and find a way to give up control to the things you don't have control over. Stop trying to will things to get better. Stop getting so upset that you're in this circumstance which stops you from moving forward. You need to get up every day and say, okay, I'm at some point going to be going to court. What do I have control over today that could create influence in that final situation. What am I doing with my time between now and the time that I actually go to sentencing? Some of you have months and months and months before you're gonna be sentencing. What are you doing with that valuable time? So many individuals are sitting in county jail right now that are very limited to what they can do with their time. There's still things you can be doing from inside jail, but if you're out in the free world, even if you're on an ankle monitor, there's things that you can be doing you need to start thinking outside of the box. You need to start getting creative. You need to start looking at how can you start making an impact and positive influence in your own life and possibly somebody else's life. We all know you cannot help a single person until you start to help yourself. So if you start saying, well, I need to go do this for my family and I need to do that for my family, your family's gonna have to figure out how to get, get by without you because if you're going to prison, they're gonna figure it out. I promise you they're gonna be absolutely fine. There might be some hardships, there might be some setbacks, there might be some minor you know, aches and breaks, but at the end of the day, everybody gets through this. That's the beautiful thing. So focus on that, that hey, this is all gonna to fall together, but what are you doing to create a roadmap? What are you doing to create success? You should be preparing for your release from prison before you ever step foot in the courthouse. And that comes with uh, focusing on what's within your control and not focusing on what's outside of your control. You have to be able to understand this in order for anything to get better. Did I unplug my microphone? No, I didn't. Uh, tip, how is the halfway house? Uh, just a second prison, just reading some of the message. I just came for the message. I used to want to, what did it say? What's up, spelling error? 
Man, the messages went by so fast that I missed. Brianna, I just came for the message. I used to want to work in criminal justice, but not anymore. You know, and that's that's the sad thing when somebody says that, right? Because people realize how fucking broke it is and they don't want any part of it. The problem is, is we need people to engage into the criminal justice system. And that small momentum, that, that what might seem like it's not making a difference in anybody's life, find a way to impact people. I found my way. I do it through YouTube and I get to reach hundreds, thousands of people. I think we've reached over a million at this point uh, with the YouTube channel. So we have, there's formats out there that are free. Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, you, you name it, Venmo, whatever. You can, you can post almost anywhere and you can have a message that goes out. So if you have a desire for the criminal justice system, it's going to be a hard, a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people because you have to be willing to deal with the hypocrisy of, of a certain extent but what can you do? What influence can you have when you have it? You got to make small changes before any big changes are going to happen, right? So number four, flaws and faults. We all have flaws. We all have faults. A lot of us don't like to focus on that. We like to say, well, this happened because of this or it happened because of that. So if you look at your flaws and faults, you need to stop justifying why you did what you did. You need to stop justifying why you're in this situation. You need to stop making excuses and saying, well, I did this for my family, or I did this for my children, or I didn't have a choice because my boss made me do it. You know, take fucking ownership of what you did. Go back to honesty. Ask yourself an honest question. Did you honestly do this for your kids? Or do you like driving a nice car and having a nice house? Nothing wrong with wanting a nice car and having a nice house. But if you want to fix the way you're thinking and you don't want to fall into this trajectory in the future, you need to ask yourself these questions. You need to identify your criminal thinking and you need to identify your, your stinking thinking. It may not be criminal. You may have thoughts that are not criminal, but they may not be the best suited for you. They may be a little selfish. They may be... Uh, to the point where you're trying to get over on somebody and you're trying to be passive aggressive. Everybody sees it, but we live in such a jaded, pussified world right now where nobody wants to offend anybody that people let you go through your life thinking that you're getting over on them. And the truth is, is they see your faults. So if you really want to know what your faults are, go to some people that you care about in your life and say, hey, look, I'm at an all-time low. Clearly, you already know I'm going to prison. What, what, what things do you see in me that should have been red flags for somebody else? Like when you heard me talking about certain things or what I was doing in my career or anything that you know about me, what do you think some of my flaws and faults are in life? Ask for some feedback from people. Get this feedback. Be open-minded to it. Be objective to it. And listen to what they got to say. If somebody says, well, you kind of talk a lot of shit or you always think you have to flash your money or you always think that you have to be the person that has all of the answers. Don't find yourself when you start getting that feedback. Don't get all upset and uh, <laughs> all jaded where you're like, well, no, I do it because of this. Or I don't do it. Don't justify it. Listen to what they got to say because that's their perception. If the minute they start giving you feedback and you start going, oh, well, no, it's not like that. They're going to, they're going to, okay, this guy asked for feedback, but he's not really re ready to hear a fucking thing. So you need to ask for feedback and you need to be willing to accept what they're going to give you and digest it. It may not be 100% point on, but that's their perception of you. That's their reality of you. So that's their truth. They're not lying to you. They're telling you what they see. We can do this to each other all day long. All of us have issues. You guys can sit here and give me feedback right now and tell me exactly what you think of me. Not everybody's going to be like, Dan, you're an awesome guy that has great content. Uh, you know, I do a lot of the good things I do. The good, the good deed gets done, but I do it for, for content. I do it for videos. I went out and fed the homeless. Would I have done it if I wasn't on YouTube? Honest question. Would I have done that if I wasn't filming? Would I have cared enough to go feed the homeless people in Spokane that were freezing cold out in the snow? Do I care? Yes. Would I have done it? Probably not. I did it for a YouTube channel because it gives content. It gives me something to make a video about. And I like making YouTube videos. It's something that gives me a lot of uh, excitement. I get, I get a high off of it. It gives me a thrill. So the thought of doing that was like, hey, I can go feed the homeless and make a YouTube video about it and make it seem like I'm doing this because I'm such a nice guy. When I really want to be a nice guy, I see myself as a nice guy. The end result is the homeless people got, pay, they got, uh, they got fed and they got clothes. But would I have done it if I wasn't making a YouTube video? Probably not. 
just honesty, right? So you're gonna hate me because I did it for a YouTube video or you're gonna be like, well, homeless people still got what they needed. Uh, I, I took RDAP, Residential Drug, uh, Drug Addiction Program. Why did I wanna take RDAP? Because I wanted a year off of my sentence, just like you. Did I think that I had a drug problem going into RDAP? Did I think I had problems with anything? Did I think that my life was out of control? Did I think that I needed to take advice from others? Or did I think that I was a victim of our government and I was being taken advantage of because I couldn't afford you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars in legal fees? I had every excuse in the book. I wanted RDAP to get the time off. My uh, reason for taking RDAP was purely to get the time off. What changed? Going through RDAP, I started to see things differently. I started to make a transition in life. I started to actually give a shit and care about the damaging consequences of my actions. And I used I started to care about what I put people through. I still wanted the time off, but my motive slightly started to change going through RDAP. That's why when you ask people what your intentions are, your intentions today are not necessarily going to be your intentions tomorrow. If you haven't watched the show uh, or the... Um, uh, what's it called? Uh, gosh. The project they did in prison where they took college students, they put them into a prison. I can't think of the name of it right now. If somebody can think of it, please uh, please post it on here for me. Um, they took, they made a certain amount of the college inmates, inmates. They made a certain amount of them guards. They put them in an environment. They wanted to see how they would interact, what would happen to them throughout time. All of the guys that started off as guards all had the uh, the initial intention of they're going to be good correctional officers. They're not going to treat the inmates bad. And by the end, the ones that were inmates became inmates, and the ones that were guards became guards. Uh, and it's this is a true story. It's actually there's a documentary about it. There's a movie made about it, and I can't think of the name of it. So if you think of the name, uh, post it in the live chat. And if you've watched this video later on, please post the name of that movie in at something project. I can't think of what it is. Post it in the comments of this video. But everybody's got selfish intentions for everything. You just have to be honest with yourself and why you're doing what you're doing. And if you can ask yourself an honest question and say, why am I doing this? And you can an answer yourself honestly and you still feel like moving forward with it, then at least you're being truthful with why you're doing what you're doing. It's okay to have self-interest. There's all kinds of fringe benefits with self-interest. So flaws and faults, figure out what your flaws are, figure out what your faults are, own them, understand them, dissect them, find a way to work on them, find a way if, if, to, to, to exploit them. Tell other people what you see your flaws and faults are. And if somebody sees you demonstrating it, ask them to say, hey, you're doing that thing that you told me you don't want to do. Simple as that, faults and flaws. Last thing, accountability. How do you hold yourself accountable? Holding yourself accountable really kind of encumbers everything that we just discussed. Um, when you're talking about holding yourself accountable, you need to create goals and you need to find a way to stick to these goals. So if your goal is, let's just say for somebody who's facing a federal prison sentence, my goal is to get the shortest sentence possible. Okay, that's, that's the finish line, right? That's, that's the ultimate goal that you want to achieve. What steps, what components take place to make that goal happen? What short-term goals do you have to do in order to, in order to create that outcome? Um, promises. You need to find a way, you know, you need to tell other what promises you've made for yourself. What, what are you willing to promise yourself? What type of circle of individuals are you in? If you tell somebody what, again, if you go back to flaws and faults, if you tell somebody what your flaws and faults are, and you tell them, I'm going to make a promise that I'm going to try to do my best. And I promise to be open-minded. When you have something to tell me, I promise to not get upset. Or I promise to not stay upset. I promise to circle back around and work on whatever it is. I can't promise that I'm not going to have a moment where I lose my shit and freak out because I'm in the process of creating new habits. But I promise that I'm going to put my best foot forward and I'm going to create new habits over the course of time. If you make these promises to yourself and you start making actual decisions, if you promise yourself every day I'm gonna make a new decision, when you start making more and more decisions and stop being so indecisive, when you start making decisions, you're gonna get better at making decisions. You're gonna make less and less poor decisions and your decisions are gonna become well 
uh, they're gonna become much more thought out and there's gonna be follow through, there's gonna be a game plan, you're gonna have your own little roadmaps. You're gonna start building this out in your mind. You're gonna say, okay, this person needs whatever it is. And I just told them I'm gonna go help them. How many times have you volunteered for something and you're like, fuck, I wish I hadn't done that? Put yourself into a bind that now you wanna find a way out of. We've all been there. I did it this morning. I committed to breakfast yesterday, this morning, and when I got up this morning, I did not wanna go to breakfast, but I went because I made a commitment, I made a promise. And if you're not gonna own up to your promises, all of these, this honesty and the positive self-talk and everything else, it all goes out the window. What's going on, McLovin? So you have to find a way to help others hold you accountable by being accountable. You can't just say you're gonna do this by yourself, I'm gonna hold myself accountable. How are you doing that if no one, if no one around you is calling your bullshit when you're bullshit? How are people keeping you in check? What are you doing when no one's looking? You're out walking your dog, it's three in the morning, no one's looking, he takes a shit in the grass. Are you picking it up? Because we both know, all of us know, if you were walking your dog three o'clock in the afternoon and there was a bunch of people out walking around, you'd pull out your little doggy bag and you'd go pick it up, looking like the good neighbor. But what are you doing when no one's looking? Are you being the good neighbor or are you being the scumbag? Don't be the scumbag because the scumbag is sneaky. He does things when no one's looking. Call your own bullshit, tell other people. Tell people, hey, I have a problem. Sometimes I just don't wanna pick up my dog shit. If you see me not picking up my dog shit, come knock on my door and I promise I won't get upset and I'll go pick up the shit. You get embarrassed, you get a little, you know, it's, it's like practicing uh, humility. Um, humility is another, another great component to work on. It's just, that's what I'm saying, there's so many. But humility, being okay with somebody saying something to you, don't feel embarrassed. We're human beings, we're gonna make human mistakes and we can learn from them, we can grow from them. Prison can be an experience that you are embarking on because you don't have a choice. Nobody wants to go to prison. The only choice you have right now is how hard are you willing to prepare to either possibly not go or mitigate as much as you can to create influence with all of the stakeholders, the judge, the prosecutor, US probation, your attorney, your family, how can you create influence with all of these individuals to where the totality can all come down and focus all of that energy into one area at the end, the decision that that judge is gonna make? What are you willing to do? So often we hear people say, well, my attorney said this judge always goes off of what the probation report is. Okay, so what influence are you trying to create with the probation officer? My attorney told me that this judge is just a hard judge. I'm pretty sure this judge is racist. I'm pretty sure this judge doesn't like women. I'm pretty sure this judge just doesn't like me. I don't think he's gonna go. So you start putting all this doubt, the opposite of positive self-talk. It's negative talk. Negative talk is gonna create doubt and it's gonna create excuses and it's gonna create all of this reason and justification for you to not do anything. So when shit does go bad, you can say, well, that was gonna happen anyway. You don't know that. You don't know that. And every client we have that's received a positive outcome, they'll attest to it, but they were all doubting it too. They all had their suspicion and they all had their doubt. You're not gonna go in this with full conviction going, I'm not gonna go to prison if I do this. You need to do it with the, with the mindset of, maybe I won't go, maybe there's a 1% or a 10% chance that this can make a difference. But if you're gonna spend five, seven, ten thousand $10,000 with us and you're not going to be willing to put this much work and effort into it, into some generalized areas and take it serious, I'm not going back to prison, you are. What do you want me to do if you're not willing to work? I can't work harder than you're willing to work for yourself. You got questions, call. Every one of our clients, you guys all have a link. You can book a consultation with me anytime you want. Uh, we have a very specific, special link just for clients to make sure you always have access. Uh, we used to just try to do it on the fly. When you had a question, shoot me a text. We still do that, but we've became so busy that it's been uh, it's been much more conducive to 
have you schedule a you know 30 minute 45 minute call when we can have your file in front of us if you've got specific questions you can uh, preload those questions into the chat we see what your questions are before we get on the phone this way it's streamlined it's giving you the best possible information for the situation that you're in so you can leave the conversation feeling like you got the answers that you that you were craving how many of you have spoken to your attorney you had a million questions and you got off that phone and you still have that same million questions now you've got maybe three or four more questions in addition to that where you leave with more questions than answers and i hear it all the time so i don't pick on attorneys but after enough clients give me the same feedback it's almost like you could replace every client we have and it sounds like they all have the same attorney we always hear the attorney doesn't call me back the attorney gives me the runaround the attorney's too busy to talk to me he he took my money and he's not doing anything different than the federal appointed attorney i originally had i'm getting the same plea uh, he told me we're going to do all these great things and now i'm taking the same plea that i was looking at prior i hear the same song and dance every time my question always reverts back to what are you doing to change the outcome are you just sitting back waiting for your attorney to fight for you because it's not going to happen your attorney's not going to fight your attorney's going to go mouthpiece to the to the prosecutor what plea are you offering prosecutor based on the evidence you have what plea offer are you willing to offer my client well here's the plea officer attorney and this is the only one we're going to offer him if he wants to go to trial saddle up because we'll be there that's the truth the feds are not afraid to go to trial they will not hesitate and they will punch you in the face at trial or take a plea they'll slap you in the face but they'll get out of the way and let the judge do what the judge wants to do you go to trial and piss off the prosecutor they are going to ask for the high end of the guidelines and they're going to argue if the attorney tries to, to ask for any downward departure sentence reduction as to where you do the plea deal your honor we recommend the low end of the guidelines but whatever you want to do we're okay with that's it they get out the way that's the best you're going to get from uh from the the attorney versus going into the prosecutor that's the best case scenario right there 99 percent of the time you're not going to hire some dream team attorney that's going to come in and you know slice the head off the dragon and you're going to go home scot-free not happening what's up solace salvador Hey, is that part two from Brian Burton on your channel? Uh, I think so, but um, unfortunately I lost some of the footage when I did a migration from computer to computer. So I think part one and part two might be up, but part three never made it because I lost the footage. So I apologize. But he's got the whole story on his channel, so you guys definitely go check out. I think he changed the name of his channel. I think it's called Bounce Back, or it was called Bounce Back. But Brian Bruton, not Burton, Bruton. Guys, that's really all I got for you. You know, um, I know you're going through a really, really stressful period of time, and there's so much weight that carries this. You, you got that, you got that monkey on your back right now. You're trying to figure out how to handle your family. You're trying to figure out. You're trying to imagine all of these new territorial situations that you're in, and you just don't know what direction you should be going in first you're running into a roadblock right now and you need to realize that you need to ask for help you need to get help from somebody aside from your attorney because your attorney's not going to help you in the personal side of these things you need to ask for help give us a call for a free consultation the link is in the description of this video book yourself a free consultation find out how we might be able to put you into the best possible scenario receiving the best possible sentence serving your sentence possibly in a location of your of your desire if you're interested in how you can potentially qualify for rdap again rdap if you don't know what it is it's a 500 hour program you take once you're in prison it's in a special housing unit not every prison has it you got to make sure that you a you qualify a lot of the qualifying factors takes place during the pre-sentence interview process if you do not have substance abuse issues and you did not have substance abuse issues you cannot qualify for rdap can you lie and say you did and try to get in the program? You can try to do that. Will you get in the program? Maybe. Uh, or maybe you'll get a new charge for falsifying documents, as you saw RDAP Law Consultants did. Um, RDAP Law Consultants was a prison consulting company out of uh, Michigan, I think, Michigan or Ohio or somewhere over there. And they are now awaiting sentencing 
because they were flat out telling people to deceive, show up to prison drunk, take pills, act like you're going through withdrawals. I mean, horrible, horrible type of, of uh, advice to give anybody that's already made poor choices as to why they're in this situation. What some people will do for a buck, right? Honest question. Did they care about anybody? Probably not. Do they think they did anything wrong? They're probably still in denial. Scumbags. They are truly bottom-feeding scumbags. They've been through the system. They know what it's like. Uh, Tony Pham, the main idiot in charge over there, the guy, I think his fake name was, uh, what was his, uh, I forgot his, I forgot whatever his fake name was, but that guy went through RDAP. He didn't learn a fucking thing. And that's, that's scary to see somebody go through, to see what you guys are going through right now. Imagine going through all of this, getting back out of prison and not learning a fucking lesson from it. And you end up right back in the same situation because you did not challenge your thoughts. You didn't create new mindsets. You didn't work on honesty. You didn't work on self-talk. You didn't work on focusing on things that are within your control and not focusing on what's out of your control. You didn't understand your flaws and your faults. You told yourself you got none. It's everybody else's. And you never held yourself accountable. If you do that going into prison, you're going to go back to prison. And if you don't go back to prison, you're, you're going to go back to being a scumbag. Either way, it's not a good life to live. So choose something better for yourself. Live your life. Live the best life that you can live. Make good choices. Work on your choices. Make better decisions than yesterday. And the next day, make a better decision than yesterday. And if you keep doing that over and over and over again, before you know it, you're going to be a completely different person, reinvented, successful in every way. Hopefully, financial freedom. Hopefully, feeling good about yourself. You can look at your family. You cannot have to look over your shoulder. If the feds want you, the feds are going to get you. So take accountability. Own up. Be the first one. Cooperate if you did it. If you are wrong, don't sit there and act like you didn't do anything wrong. Don't sit there. I'm not saying nothing. I'm not talking. Go to prison if you want. Go spend 20, 30 years in prison if you want. I, I hear all of these gangsters online, all of these, uh, some of these prison channels, they talk and they're just not. They're not using honesty. They're creating a, a YouTube channel sounding like a big tough ex-inmate that lived a rough life and now they're going to talk about all the glorifying their prison stories. Prisons for fucking morons. Nobody wants to be in prison. Don't glorify that shit. Don't get out of prison and talk about, oh man, you got in this fight. I was in this gang. You know, my prison stories are, I was in this workout group and I was going to this study group. My prison stories sound a lot more like somebody somebody's college stories. Uh, so choose how you're going to do your prison time. Don't waste your time in prison and become a, a bigger fool than what got you into this to begin with. Solus, let's, uh, let's, let's hop on a call um, before you go. Use the link in the description of the video and you and I will hop on a call. But guys, 47 minutes, we've gone long enough. Uh, Jenny, if you're still there, thanks for hanging out. Everybody else, I hope you guys have a great night. Subscribe, like the channel, share this content. Remember, one day at a time, people helping people, community is method, guys. I love every single one of you and I'll see you guys in a couple days. I'm going to Tampa this weekend, so maybe we'll do a little video from Tampa. All right, everybody. Have a great evening. Peace.